I'm Jason Epperson, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. Our top story this week comes from Jayco, one of the largest RV manufacturers around, who've opened their newest pre-delivery inspection, or PDI, facility. The 70,000-square-foot building is their fifth PDI building, and it will allow Jayco to inspect 100% of all Jayco products before they leave the manufacturer's plants. If that sounds like no big deal to you, you'd be amazed at how many RVs never go through any inspection until they reach the dealership. Traditionally, manufacturers had relied on dealers to be the final stop on the production line, and for good reason. That trip to the dealership is sort of a shakedown, and problems often arise on that journey. But in recent years, as dealership service bays have been more and more overtaxed, dealers haven't been so thrilled to be taking on the task. Prior to the pandemic boom in the RV industry, I was following many manufacturers who seemed to be getting serious about quality. Jayco began performing PDIs only as far back as 2019. Many had to put some of those plans on the back burner to make hay while the sun was shining, but I think as the RV industry normalizes, we're going to see a larger focus on quality, particularly as more of us get smarter about our purchases. Jayco also says that their brands, which also include Integra and Highland Ridge, have been focused on continuous improvement of something called repair event cycle times. That's the amount of time it takes to get an RV fixed after you have a problem. Jayco thinks improving repair event cycle time is not only good for the customers, but it's also going to reduce their costs and positively impact the overall customer experience. Gas prices have seen a dramatic reduction in the past month, down more than 30 cents for a gallon of regular unleaded. The national average is about 344 as of this recording, and some experts I follow say we could see a national average under $3 by the end of the year. Of course, fuel prices are still relatively high, but we could see a year-over-year -year reduction soon for gasoline. Not likely for diesel, however. Diesel is down about 18 cents on the month, but still about a dollar and a half above where it was a year ago. That's still driven by those low diesel stocks. And as we come into the cold season where many, especially in the Northeast, heat with distillates, we could see more fluctuation in diesel prices over the winter. Fuel prices have definitely had an effect on RV travel this year, even if there were still a ton of people hitting the road. The nation's largest campground chain, KOA, recently surveyed RV owners and campers and found that at least 74% of campers made one or more adjustments to their travel plans this year. 38% due to inflation, 37% due to fuel prices. Other factors included the continuing effects of COVID and difficulty surrounding air travel. Of those who camped more often in 2022, 39% shared that they canceled other planned trips in favor of camping. Another 36% decided to take trips closer to home, allowing them to travel shorter distances. And COVID is, believe it or not, still affecting travel. In light of a recent uptick in cases, indoor areas at Great Sand Dunes National Park will once again require masks. The National Park Service uses the Center for Disease Control's Community Levels tool to track infection rates in local counties to make decisions about masks. And Alamosa County, Colorado currently has a high spread of COVID-19. Masks at the park will be required in areas such as bathrooms and visitor centers until further notice regardless of vaccination status. All national parks still require people to mask up before using public transportation services. While Colorado's other national parks may not currently require masks indoors, hospitals across the state are struggling to accommodate patients with the triple threat of RSV, flu, and COVID-19. While cases and hospitalizations aren't nearly as bad as last year's winter Omicron surge, public health officials are warning that hospitals are once again being strained. More to come in a moment, including an update on RV values, a new carbon fiber trailer, and a couple great websites you might want to check out. But first, this episode is sponsored by RoadPass Pro. You've heard me talking about them for months, and if you've waited for the right opportunity, now is it. They have a major discount going on just for you. We love using all the apps in the RoadPass suite to plan our travels, Togo RV, Road Trippers, OvernightRVParking.com, Campendium, and Our Village. You get all of them for $49.99 a year, but that price is about to go up. And if you sign up now, that's 
that's your price for life. And this is the last price lock Road Pass Pro will ever feature. So get it now before it's gone. But there's more. Normally I'd tell you to use RV Miles 10X code to get $10 off. But for a very limited time, you can use the code RV Miles 25X to get $25 off. That's a 50% savings. The folks at Road Pass have extended this offer only to our RV Miles community, and it ends on December 8th, right around the corner. It's a great gift for someone who travels a lot and doesn't have room for a lot of stuff. Save $25 now through December 8th, 2022 with the code RVMILES25X and grab an amazing deal while they're still offering their forever price lock guarantee. RV values are taking their annual off-season dip combined with a major market correction that's been going on for months, so now might be a good time to get a deal, particularly on motorhomes, which have been resisting major price cuts due to chassis availability and backlogs. But auction lane watcher Blackbook is showing that motorhome values, at least at auction, took a major dive last month, with the average selling price down $12,000. Their experts say that the recent decrease in value for motorhomes looks drastic, but it's actually part of a trend that they've been seeing since June. For example, August values are down 10% from July and 16% from June. The growing U.S. electric vehicle infrastructure has the RV industry concerned that the ability to charge large vehicles or those with trailers attached is nearly impossible with few charging stations able to accommodate them. The RV Industry Association's government affairs team has launched lobbying efforts to expand ERV infrastructure, spreading the word about the need for an increased number of pull-through EV charging stations. With the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act signed into law, $5 billion has been set aside for states to improve their EV infrastructure. Another $2.5 billion remains with the federal government to spend on national infrastructure. The RVIA government affairs team is hoping those funds will help create more pull-through sites suitable for ERVs, both at charging stations and in campgrounds. They've been able to garner some support from the Federal Highway Administration, which put out a statement in the Federal Register announcing that pull-through sites would be considered. The team is also undertaking a state-by-state -state campaign to reach out to state departments of transportation, as well as governor's offices and economic development offices. We've all seen some of the terrible range tow tests that have been put out with electric trucks pulling 10,000 pound trailers. If people are going to pull trailers long distances with electric vehicles, the design of trailers is going to need to change, particularly the weight and aerodynamics. So here's an option, a carbon fiber teardrop trailer. A company called Carbon Light Campers based in the state of Washington has introduced a teardrop trailer called the Rift, which weighs in at only 500 pounds. It's designed to double as both a camper and a utility trailer with a removable galley wall, which frees up interior space for hauling gear and equipment. Its tongue weight is just 61 pounds, light enough to tow behind a small car. There's a new web tool that's just launched for nomadic travelers to find events to participate in during their adventures. Travelinggatherings.com is billed as a one-stop platform for adventure seekers who want to see some local live music, locate a local farmer's market, RV show, boat show, or even boondock in the desert with a bunch of like-minded souls. The site was built by a full-time digital nomad, Michael Anderson, who had a goal of listing fun-filled events for fellow wanderers who love their solitude and freedom, but also crave a bit of community. Traveling Gatherings is brand new, so there aren't a ton of events there yet, but if you know of one that's upcoming, you can add it yourself. It's free to use and post on the website. Another independent site you might want to consider using, campgroundviews.com, has reached a major milestone. Campground Views allows you to virtually drive through a campground just like Google Street View and see what campsites look like before you book them they've now released their 1,000th campground virtual tour. That's 1,000 campgrounds that have 3D tours on their site. In many parks, you can see if a site is available and start to book it directly from that 3D view. Campground Views is a paid service, but if you're somebody who books a lot of campgrounds and is highly concerned about the space in the site, you might want to consider it, especially for public campgrounds, which they have a lot of. Finally, only 17% of Americans report actually roasting chestnuts on an open fire. And campground software firm CampSpot wants to know why. I frankly think that number is a bit high. I've never seen anybody roast a chestnut on an open fire. But it probably has a lot to do with all of the American chestnut trees dying off 100 years ago to disease. 
Camp Spot is launching a 12 days of Camp Miss giveaway. It began on Thursday, and you can enter each day through December 16th when one grand prize winner will take home $2,500 in Camp Spot and travel credits, a six piece outdoor cooking set, and some chestnuts for roasting. Daily winners will get prizes ranging between $45 and $2,000. To enter, head to campspot.com slash about slash campmas. We'll put a link to that in the description. That's it for this week's RV and camping news. If you got something out of this video, hit the like button. If you want more like this, hit the subscribe button to get them delivered to your feed. And if you really like what we do and want to support what we do, please hit the member button and become a member of our channel. It really, really helps us out and helps us bring more of the RV and camping news directly to you. We'll see you next time.